So one of the major trends of 2011 has been the use of biometric IDs in the developing world. Uh, in the West, we think of biometric IDs, which are IDs based on fingerprint scans or iris scans as the stuff of spy novels. But in the developing world, they're beginning to fulfill a much more uh, valuable function, which is that they're uh, documenting the undocumented for the first time. Um, in India, which is the, kind of the example that's been getting the most play, they're now enrolling one million people a day based on their iris scans and giving them unique ID numbers. Uh, it, this means, in the case of India, that you can get a bank account based on your eyeball and your fingerprints, even if you come in with no other documents. And if you think about that in a context where 7 out of 10 uh, children in the least developed countries don't have birth certificates, you, begin to think, you can begin to understand how big a problem not having proper identification is. Uh, so about 450 million people in the developing world have had their biometric uh, data recorded. And that number is set to triple over the next five years by one estimate. Now, there's one part of this story which has been underplayed. And that's the use of biometric IDs to reduce corruption. The reason why it's been underplayed is because it's embarrassing to developing world governments. Uh, in salary payments, there's a problem of ghost workers, ghost pensioners, uh, ghost welfare recipients. And these are workers who don't exist. They're uh, names put on government payrolls in developing countries, usually by local bureaucrats, of dead people, of infants, of workers who do exist but aren't showing up. And the reason this is such a huge problem is because uh, the protocols for hiring are very loose, especially in the provinces, and people are paid in cash. The way that biometric IDs are poised to help fix this problem is uh, in combination with electronic payments. So you want to figure out how you're going to pay the person that you're attempting to pay your teacher in rural uh, Nigeria. And you want to make sure that it's the right person and that there's not, you know, they haven't hired five teachers who don't exist. So you do that by using a biometric and by paying electronically, which you can now do basically through mobile phone technology, point of sale devices. Uh, and you can have a biometric fingerprint reader at the pay point. Um, so just to give you a sense of the scale of the problem, in Zimbabwe, they recently found 75,000 ghost workers out of 188,000 uh, government employees. And I think about that in a country where 80 cents of every dollar goes to salary payments. So that's the savings of over $200 million a year. Um, in Nigeria, they just found, announced in July, 43,000 ghost workers uh, after a biometric exercise. And that's a savings of $75 million annually. Uh, so what's so interesting about this is that you can see how technology is allowing uh, states where there's decentralized power uh, to basically expand the power of the state. Uh, we normally think of corruption as part of uh, too much state power. In the case of ghost workers, it's um, decentralized state power. That's the problem.